not panic. Seeing what we have here, you'd be forgiven for believing that I've started work without you, that you've been left out of the loop, but that's not the case. This is all temporary. This is called tinkering or a mock build where I'm trying to get my head around how it all fits back together, experimenting with how the pieces will fit together and come up with a plan, if you like. Now plans, since this bulkhead restoration began, have, have just changed considerably and constantly giving the impression that I might not know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Now we can see that we've got quite a bit of stuff installed here and I do confess to be somewhat tempted to do the build on the truck. Now in space using spirit levels we can get it square both on the top and on the sides but that's not what we want it square to, we want it square to the truck where we have a concrete floor that may or may not be level, we have tyres, springs and we have a 70 year old chassis that's uh, sort of you know a bit battered to buggery and I don't think there's anywhere on it that I have faith that's going to give me an accurate measurement so I think transferring it to the jig may still be the best option. So while we are tinkering what I'd like to do is to understand how the vents are going to fit together. What we have here is the top rail. This I'm calling the central panel. And the original central dividing piece lived here. I was hoping to restore that, but I've traded it in. I've, I've built myself a new one. Now, based on the dimensions of this thing here, we've taken measurements on both sides from the top of the pillar post down to this point here. And that's where the top of our central panel lines up to. So we take our central dividing piece and we put it right there in the middle, as you'd expect, and hold it in place. So now we see this, this, and that form three of the edges where our vents are going to fit into. The fourth is achieved by this little zigzaggy piece we've created there. It's got some very tight bends and we've got a a large number of sneaky and cheeky techniques to handle these tight bends. All right, but not all is well in paradise. Let's have a look to the differences with the original. So that's it there. It's going to lock in from behind. But what we're seeing here is that piece of metal. That is part of the door pillar post. This top bit here is the top rail. And the zigzaggy bit that we're talking about is in there. And the rest of this panel is the one we manufactured just recently. You saw that. Okay, there it is. So this top rail has a profile. Hang on a minute. All right, it goes something like this. And a little squiggle there. All right. So you see how we've got those angles underneath? On this one here, it almost looks like somebody's cut straight in and then shoved the whole panel up inside, but I don't want to do that and risk butchering my new top rail, which is quite expensive. So I'm choosing to work around those angles. To work this out, we'll start with cardboard templates for the various panels to experiment with the best fitment. A lot of them didn't work. Eventually, we transfer it to steel and cut them to shape either before or after bending. So he slots in just like that, tucks in behind there, and folds in tight there. And that is how that works. And then that big panel right here slots in there. And you can see the way it cases around a little zigzaggy bit and they'll all be welded together. All right, and on the back we can see our support panels run into the center panel and also this lower little wing just below it and closes in our door pillar post from the back. Now we have all four of our edges for our vents. We have our frame, so to speak. I want to find out where the vents live. So we know they're going to go in there, but exactly where? To account for any inaccuracies, we do have some lateral movement on the hinges, provided, of course, you don't jam it up like such, but you know, back here, a little bit here, a little bit there. But to take the guesswork out of it completely, we're going to install this bracket here that lives inside the truck and that's what opens and closes events.
that on, we can gently slide it through here. Careful, not to disturb anything. And there we can find a couple of holes in the top rail that we can put bolts into. All right, so at this point, it's taken all the lateral movement out of our vents, and that is exactly where it needs to be. Now we can see in this gutter there's a few plug welds there, we want to avoid those. So I think we could leave that hinge pretty much where it is. This one, tweak it over here a little, and that one there, pretty much where it is. And we'll take our marker pen and we'll put a mark on those locations. The original top rail shows the holes are slightly forward of centre. Stick one in there. And one in there. Okay, we can drill them out. Now we're going to look at the foot wells. We've discussed in a previous episode the extensive modifications necessary to allow the fitment of the V8 engine. That explains why we're trying to restore these original foot wells rather than replace them with new ones and hopefully bypass the need of recreating this entire central area that goes over your bell housing. When we rip this apart from its original bulkhead position, there's no doubt been a little bit of stress that's created a slightly wonkiness to it and also well 70 years of rust and wear so you can see here that it's not sitting exactly as it should so we can see this lip is not lining up with the door pillar post in a relaxed position now with a measure of force i can heave it back and then we could probably weld it into place but i don't want to do that i don't want to force the metal into a position that it's not comfortable with for fear when we take it out of the jig that the whole bulkhead will go and that would be a bad thing. Now we do have some rust here. We have a little bit of rust further up. So I'm proposing that we cut out this entire sidewall of the footwell and replace it with a custom measured one. Brings us to a second issue. This lip should be sitting flush against the side of the footwell, but it's not. There's like a quarter of an inch gap into there, which is not as it should. So when we recreate our new panel, we're going to extend it out a quarter of an inch so it sits flush. Everybody should be happy. Now just out of interest with our original footwells removed, and we have a brand new one here, we can see a similar phenomenon going on as we pop this into position. Line it up where it needs to be. And right there, you can see that gap again. All right, so that's, that's at least quarter of an inch again. Now thing is that the measurement across there checks out with the originals. The depth at the rear end of the door pillar post, that checks out with the original. But the one at the front, I can't compare because on both of them, they got destroyed in extraction. But I'm assuming that the mismeasurements is possibly happening in this front section. Wow, this is all getting very exciting now. Okay, we're just about ready to disassemble all this and put it into the jig. In the meantime, however, we do have to prepare that central panel right there and put on the hinges for the bonnet, uh, possibly the brackets for whatever, and also the rain gutter has to go on as well. And then the rear backing panels have our little brackets that we talked about earlier that hold our windscreen in place. We'll need captive nuts for them. The centre of the first hole is one and three sixteenth of an inch down from the top. The placement of our bracket is just slightly offset from the edge, so we can mark them and prepare to drill them out. Now I do confess to having a problem with British threads, and it's nothing more sinister than the fact that they're very hard to find in my part of the world. So I'm opting wherever possible to swap them out with the UNF and UNC bolts and threads and so forth. At least those measurements are consistent with each other. 
Our captive nut is a metal bar about 3 16th of an inch thick, held in place by a sheet metal cage. All right, so let's grab our 1 8 piece of steel. Stick it in the back there. Mark it about there. Mark it about there. So the holes that we got to drill, this is a 5 16th bolt that's going to go through here. So we're going to do a quarter inch hole and then we can thread it with our taps and dies and so forth. Well, here we have it. We have our captive nut and our bracket installed. Hmm? Now we just have to do it on the other side. Well, we've, um, we've already done it on the other side. It's, uh, I wanted to make sure it worked before I filmed it. And that's a, that's a trick you generally learn the hard way. All right, so what we're doing here is positioning our rain gutter where I reckon it's gonna go. Well, we've established where our rain gutter needs to be, but now we have to mark as accurately as possible where our hinges are gonna go. These originals are quite thick and somehow they've managed to roll the steel around on itself to be able to fit over those shafts on the bonnet. Anyway, the options would be is to cut them off and weld them onto the new panel or, as I want to do, fabricate my own. So I found these thingamajigs in the hardware store that are, I think they're coupling nuts. I've got a few varieties, but this is the half inch version. I've taken a drill, gutted out all the threads, and then also a couple of nylon bushes. So their outer diameter fits nicely into the coupling, but the inner diameter fits nicely on those shafts that are on the inner hinges for the bonnet. I did an experimental weld onto this plate that we're going to use and it comes out very solid indeed. I think they will make good replacement hinges. Instead of welding them onto the panel, I want to create a bolt-on, bolt-off option. Well, we've taken measurements from the center of the original panel out to where the hinges butt up to that peg that they lock into on the bonnet. And we've transferred those measurements over onto the new panel and we've even mapped out the plates that we're going to construct. Using these mapped out sections, we're going to then transfer it to a cardboard template and then turn that into steel. This is what 
we've got going so far, we have our plates and our hinges where we think they need to be. But because we're using the bushes, the fitment is gonna be more exact. So we have to be very sure. Now these are gonna bolt on, but we don't wanna drill holes until we do know they're in the right place. Everything's lined up. So I think it's gonna be a good course of action if we tack the hinges to the plates, the plate, the panel, and because the bolts are gonna sit proud of the plate, we cut the heads off and we're gonna tack them on to where we think the hole's gonna be drilled. hinges are where they need to be. They're uh, our little bolt head. That also just fits into that gap right there, as you can see. But there were some variations on the original hinges on the original panel in that the passenger side jutted out a little further than the driver's side. And what's happened here, because these are same same, is we've lost a bit of that distance on this one. You can see that it clashes up against the steel with this clearance on this side. We're gonna try and elongate the holes of this bracket. We're gonna draw a line down the guts, perpendicular across, and then we're gonna take our milling tool and see if we can oblong those holes and make up some of that distance. With our elongated bolt holes, we do have the distance we now require, and you can see our central panel, it's doing well. Yep, we've got it. At this point, we can carefully mark out where our bolt holes are gonna be and drill them out. Well, the backing plates for the hinge area are using the same trick we did for the captive nut at the back of that panel we were just playing around with. Anyway, these are gonna sit inside behind the hinges like such. And you can see they take up that entire space in there and on the other side, so that they give the hinge area more support. Now in the vain attempt to combat rust, this and that have been painted, as well as the entire inner section of the central panel, and we're only gonna scrape it back to clear metal where the welds are gonna be. focus now on these support brackets. I've wisely been taking photographs along the way of this restoration so I can remind myself of how things used to be. Now, it appears that only one of the brackets was in use and that was on the passenger side. So I don't know if they're important or not. However, we may as well refabricate some new ones and install them nonetheless. Now you will be quite familiar with our cardboard template trick where we get an idea of what we're dealing with before we transfer that to steel, cut and weld and create. We've taken some measurements from the center of the panel through to the center of the hole on both sides, which is 18 and a quarter inches, give or take, on both. So to avoid things getting bogged down, keep things moving and repetition, we've uh, taken the liberty and gone ahead and created a couple of brackets. Right, we've used the same trick as previous drilling and threading a couple of holes in a 3 16 inch iron bar, metal bar, steel bar, to act as captive nuts, which are then welded in to the center panel. And then for a little extra security, we've also welded them onto the hinge backing plates. All right, as for the hinges, I mean, they're in position. And look at that beautiful galvanized finish we've managed to accomplish, hey? Regular viewers to the channel will know better than to um, ask how we got that, because they know that uh, <clears throat> they'll only be disappointed. All 
All right, there they are. Hey? And look what we've got going on here too. We've had uh, little access points cut in there on the, on, the, on the panel that allow us to get our fingers in to thread the nut onto the uh, support beam that heads down to wherever it goes. With our brackets in place, we can focus on these two holes right there. And what screws into those is this plate here that has on it electrical components like a fuse box and maybe even a voltage regulator for your dynamo, so forth. Now, I have a different idea for the electrical setup on this old wagon that we'll talk about in a, in a future film. However, I think the concept of this is going to be of value. So we're going to do exactly the same trick, cutting little captive nuts, drilling holes, and preparing as if we're going to install this. Now as we look a little closer onto our original central panel at the back here, through the rust and the grime and the nastiness, we can see it has three skins on the back. One, two, and then that support bracket right there. Okay, so that says to me that it's a, a lot more rigid than our single skinned specimen that we have here. Now we do have some rather robust hinge brackets that do a lot of support, but uh, I was just thinking that I should really beef it up a little bit. My original plan was to grab some 1 8 steel bar and run that through there. But I thought that might have been a bit overkill and, and start making things a lot heavier than it needs to be. The second option I have in mind is taking some 16 gauge sheet metal and placing that in there as a second skin and welding it into place. And we have some shorter bits for the outer edges. Now what I don't like about this idea is I feel that it's going to turn into a big, nasty rust trap. So, I've decided against it. So our third option is to go back to the 1 8 steel bar, but the thinner one. And then we're going to pop that in there, hope for the best, weld it into place, connect all these bits to give it some rigidity. With all our internal supports completed to my great horror, our very straight panel all of a sudden had a big bow in it. So I had to take it over to those saw horses over there and sit on it, and it, it seems to have worked. It's uh, not perfect, but it's a lot better. So we'll find out, I'm sure, in the near future. Our last job is to install our rain gutter. Well, there we go, it's in. Viewers may notice our, our rain gutter is green and uh, not series Land Rover bronze green, but random Rust-Oleum green, and it may be, may be causing some folks some uh, palpitations and stuff, but don't panic. There is an explanation for this. Uh, we're just not ready to give that explanation just yet. So let's go and get ourselves into some real trouble.
Well, we can see that we've got things in the jig and it's lining up a lot better than it was on the truck, especially around the back here at the passenger side. But we've still got that big quarter an inch gap that occurs here alongside the foot wells to the door pillar post. The other side's flush and it's also lining up a lot better than I thought it was as well. Now, something to keep in mind is our vents. With the hinges on, they touch and it stops the vents from going in. That's something that we wanna be aware of before we weld things into place. So there'll be some minor adjustments there to make sure they clear. Now, as far as the foot wells go, I'll save the exciting stuff, but there's a lot of boring, dreary work that we really don't need to see. That can be done behind the scenes between now and then the next episode. The next episode being where we hope all the panels just come together, all the welding's perfect, and then Bob's your uncle, we have ourselves a bulkhead. So, if all goes well, I think it's too much to ask, you can join me in the next episode called The Big Stitch Up.